Live. I'm Maddie. I'm Greg, and all together now we, we are live. live. It is episode number fifty. Fiftieth <gasps> episode. Whoa. Wow! Fifty. Let's go lives. Brought to you at eleven a.m. here from our spare room studio. All those shows packed with fun and facts and quizzes and music yeah. and dancing and some mind fizzingly awesome science. We are so proud of Let's Go Live and even more so of you, the Let's Go Live audience. But we're actually going to save all of the big celebrations for the special Let's Go Live awards ceremony that's going to be happening at 11am on Wednesday. This Wednesday. So excited. Um, stay tuned until the end of the show uh, to hear more about that and what we've got planned for the future of Let's Go Live. Yeah, some big news. But for now, who is with us in the live chat this who morning? Who is with us in the live chat? Right, we've we got Puppy in Doveridge. Hi. We have Jasper in Wolverhampton. Ian and Joven in Hong Kong. Uh, Harry and Arthur in Somerset. Lucinda and Imi in Silverstone. We've got Holly in London. Maisie and Poppy in Japan. Maya in Battersea. Zainab, Mira and Abda in Saudi Arabia. We have uh, Rebecca and Jessica from Thatcham. Ben in Tombridge. <laughs> Lucas in Claygate. Spencer in Plymouth. Archie in Immingham. Isla and Emily in Livingston. And we've got... Albert and Wren in Kent. And so, so many more. And of course, <gasps> hello to you if you are watching back later mm. on. Hello, hello. Yeah, thank you for joining us for our 50th show. Oh my word. Oh. Uh, give us a big thumbs up if you've been with us since the beginning. Nice idea. Why give not? us a thumbs up. Whether you're watching live, click the thumbs up. If you're watching back, give us a thumbs up. Right. Yeah, so for the past four shows, we have been learning about... Extreme Explorers. You nudged me. I was so there. I was yeah. ready. I was ready. Extreme Explorers, see? It's like I'm a, one of those magic buttons. Yeah. But um, as always, we have absolutely loved seeing your photos. So why don't we recap some of the polar adventures that you have been on since we saw you last Wednesday. Uh, first photo here. This is Aria, Kaya and Finn. They experimented with different materials to build their igloos. The ice igloo took them longer because it was pretty slippery and they had to freeze it a layer at a time. Mm. This is Lawrence who created uh, this igloo out of cardboard and polystyrene. Wow, look at that. He's pretending to be a scientist doing research on polar bears and the effect global warming is having on their habitat. He did not expect a polar bear to get that close to his igloo. Max tried lots of different layouts to perfect his igloo. He came up with a design using vertical blocks for the bottom ring and a horizontal one for above the door. Nice engineering. Uh, this is Elena and Rocket with their snow goggles on outside of space camp. Henry was inspired to make a polar base with goggles and a scarf and looked through his mum's field photos of when she was an extreme explorer wow. and went to Antarctica. Cool, cool. mum. Finlay loved learning about narwhals and their tusks, so made one out of Multilink. Harry and James had loads of fun with their mum making narwhal tusks. Hi. Hi, Harry and James's mum. And then Henry made his a rainbow narwhal. Nice idea. And last but not least, Chloe and Charlie made these fantastic snow goggles and even tried to get their dog Frazzle involved. Oh, shout out to Frazzle. Amazing. <laughs> Why don't we recap some of our, well, all of our extreme Ex you were too oh, close it's there. Too early our then. extreme explorer destinations with a tour around Google earth right so we started in northern africa and we joined a camel caravan across the sahara desert chatting to angina about sand then we headed to south america and trekked through the amazon rainforest we met charles and we spotted pangolins after that we flew to nepal we joined sarah to climb the dizzying heights of mount everest there it is she's been to the top cool we went up through uh, all those five camps to reach right at the top of the world before we skied from pole to pole with two quick icy expeditions to the Arctic and then down to the Antarctic with Prem. Mm -hmm. So where have we ended up today? Oh, I don't know. What? No, I, 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 I don't. You, I really don't know. You always know where we are. No, no. But t today I, I, I genuinely, I don't know where we are. But I also don't know where we are. Okay, so here's what happened. We were on our way sailing the seven seas to our next extreme explorer destination when I, mountaineering Maddie and globetrotting Greg here were thrown overboard and we were washed out to sea. <gasps> <laughs> we were, we're stranded, stranded on a desert, desert island. island. Oh! Stranded on a desert on a, island. Oh. What are we yes. going to do? Hold we're going to have to use our survival skills. Woohoo! 
Greg, what, what are you doing? Desert Island. Is it Desert Island. Desert Island. No, that now is not the time, Greg, for... Cherry Bakewell? No. No, that is not the time at all. <laughs> okay? Um, we need to get ourselves sorted. We are here on a desert island and we have nothing but basic essentials and our survival school know-how to try and get by. Oh, survival okay? school know-how. That's Got the it. one. That's All the right. one. Nothing to but see here, you lot. Thankfully, we weren't the only ones washed up on this island. The mm. storm also uh, blew some other objects overboard. Um, they washed up too, and they've been strewn all over the beach. But the problem is the tide is going out, so we've only got just about time to pick up three different objects before they get washed out to sea. This feels like it's a good time for... A quiz! Come on, you lot! 50th show. Let's see you do the quiz dance. Do the quiz dance, do the Oh, I don't know what we're doing. It's I'm a random quiz dance. Swim! <laughs> there we go! Brilliant! I thought I'd keep it going for a little bit longer today. <laughs> what is our quiz today? Okay, this is how this quiz is going to work. Um, here is our desert island. Ah. You can see it's there. It's beautiful. It's sandy. There's some trees on there. We're surrounded by the ocean. Now, these are the objects that uh, were also blown into the ocean off our boat. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is you need to decide which three objects you want to bring onto the island, grab and bring onto the island with us to help us with our extreme explorer survival. Yes, there are no right or wrong answers here. The important thing is just you just think carefully about your three choices. You might pick completely different objects to us and that's okay. Absolutely. In fact, if you're watching live, let us know which three objects you choose in the live chat. Mm -hmm. If you're watching back, yell it at the screen. Okay. Okay, what should we go for? All right, so let's have a think. Um, first up, there's a tent. And we know that shelter is very important. We've yeah. learned that with survival school. But I think we will be able to make a tent. Yeah, like we... milk some sort of shelter from the leaves and stuff. Yeah, we learned how to do that when we went to the rainforest. There's also a hammock there as well, which yep. is kind of like a shelter, right? Something to sleep in. Gets yeah. you up off the ground, which is very, very important. Yeah, right? get you away from the bugs. I reckon we could make something as well. I think so, yeah? but we would need okay. tools to do that. We would need um, tools to do that. And there's rope. Right, so helpful yeah. for climbing, building things, climbing, maybe even fishing, lashing things together. But could we make our own? I think we could, right? The trees, some of those trees that are there, we might be able to make our own yeah. rope. Um, um, food, there's a bag of food, probably a little bit soggy, but still very edible. Well, we learned that actually humans can go up to three weeks without food. So mm. the island's looking pretty lush and tropical. I think there may be food on there already. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to gamble and not take the food. Got no, it. Um, so we're not taking anything so far. How about the axe? Right, because we said mm. that we need to be able to cut down those trees. Very helpful. Yeah, I think if we're going to be building our own shelters and beds, then I think we, we the definitely axe? need the tool. Yes, we need right. an axe. We're taking the axe. Oh, That's first the first choice. of our three. Got it. Okay, what's next? Fresh water. There's a bottle of fresh water. <gasps> water is very important. Super important. Uh, we can't go along without water at all. Mm. It's tricky, isn't it? Because we could also use the bottle for something. Yeah, we could. Should we have it as let's a put maybe? It for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't know if there's going to be water on the island. Okay, water's on. Um, um, so who have we got here? We've got Jennifer saying magnifying glass, water, and axe. Mm. Craig saying magnifying glass can make fire. Yeah, that's well, that's a really good that's point. That's a good point about the magnifying glass, but there are also waterproof matches. There are also waterproof matches. And whilst you can make a fire with a magnifying glass, I, the don't, stick together. I don't think our skills are that do good. Do we have those skills? No, <laughs> not yet. Not. We need to do more survival skills. Shall we take the waterproof matches? I think if that means we could make a fire and we could get potentially boiling water immediately, I think we should get, I think fire is mm. important. Vicky says the bag, the rope and the tent, interestingly. Uh, Stella says compass, first aid, axe. Why would you have a guitar? I guess music is really mental good for health. mental health. It's yeah. good, isn't it? Yeah, and if but you're desperate, got, you could burn We've it. got your <laughs> singing, so we'll be okay. <laughs> sunglasses. Um, sunglasses, very useful, protect the eyes. But we could also, we could make, um, we like, could make snow goggle versions we like could, we did from Polar. Yeah, we could make them out of coconuts. Uh, first aid kit. Okay, so the good thing about a first aid kit is there are lots of different bits inside it. There might be yeah, scissors, yeah. there might be bandages, which not yeah. only could you bandage cuts and wounds with, but you oh, could use that string as we well. We can only take three things, that would be number four. We're gonna have, okay, I think we need the first aid kit, right? So we're gonna, I, So what are we gonna get rid of? Let's trust that there is water on the island that we will be able to boil if we have matches. There may even be some sp special purification tablets in the first aid kit. That's true. Okay, so those are our three things. First aid kit, waterproof matches, and axe. That's what we've gone for. That's tough. What have you gone for? There are no right what or wrong answers saying? with this. Um, Leah says, oh, 
That's not a good idea. Use the guitar strings for something. Oh, that's genius. Leah said water, rope and an axe. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else saying water matches tent. Uh, Jennifer axe. says the matches will run out. They will, they but if will. we can get a fire started, then that will buy us time to learn how to, to keep... make fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking you might immediate. Keep it going. Okay, brilliant suggestions. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Okay. Um, right, so we have some essentials. Yeah, because... Now it's time. Yeah, go on. Well, we need to get settled now into the desert island. Oh! Da, da. A sense of theme here. Greg, what are you doing? Now is not the time for a delicious layered lemon pudding. Dessert island, Maddie. No, no, we Let's don't. Let's play more. We don't want. What? No, that is not what we're doing right now, okay? Say what? We don't have time to be eating different desserts. This is delicious, by the way. Okay, where do you even keep getting those from? It's a secret. <laughs> Okay. Right, where are we? In what? our Sahara Desert episode of Extreme Explorers, we learnt about the importance of water. Yes. Okay, we've just decided that we're not taking water with us, so we need a solution. Yes. One humans... thing is, boil it, right? Yeah. Clean it through boiling it. Sorry. Carry on. Know, Carry on. And, but humans will only last sort of three to four days, if that, without water. Mm. So we do need to make it our top priority. So we hope, we think that this island is going to have a source of fresh water mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, we just need to find it. Yes. And then the problem is it's probably going to be groundwater from a stream, right? Mm -hmm. Or just kind of a mini lake. Yeah. So the likelihood is that's going to be dirty. Yes. I don't want to drink that. It's going to make us sink. We have an activity for you. And for that, we're going to need this. Oh, look at that. Nice, Ugh. dirty water. What we're going to do is show you how to filter this water. Yes. Um, we should say, though, we're not making a filter that will make water that is clean enough to drink. No. But we are making a filter that will make water clearer. Yeah. So the challenge is, is to try to get it as clear as possible. Yeah. Uh, and the great thing is you can make this with stuff you could find in the garden or in a park or even on a desert island. <laughs> even then. <laughs> to make your water filter, all you need is uh, a recycled plastic bottle. Um, you're going to want some dirty swamp water. Uh, and then all we've started, all we've done, is we have chopped the recycled bottle in half, we've taken the top off, and then at the bottom, I've just put a little bit of cloth, you could use a coffee filter, or any bit of cloth really, an old, an old t-shirt, and I've just tied it with an elastic band, you could use string, and then that is going upside down in the other part of the recycled bottle. So this is the main bit of our water filter. But now I'm gonna start layering some natural materials, and we're going to go from the smallest thing up to the biggest thing. Yeah, because different materials filter different things out. So. Um, as, the, as the water flows through, as we, we say, as it percolates through, it filters different things out. So mm -hmm. the larger stones are going to filter out the bigger bits, right? Like mm -hmm. the sediment, like leaves and insects and mud. And then this moss and this sand, because the gaps between it all is much smaller, it's going to catch the much smaller stuff. Yeah. Um, like little bits of mud and little bits of dust. Yeah, so I started off with sand and then we've gone for moss. I'm going to use some straw next oh, because nice. we have some of this left over. But you really could, I'm making such a mess. <laughs> you really could use anything that you could find out and about. So it could be leaves, it could be grass. So that's the straw. And then on top, I'm putting our biggest, heaviest layer and that is just some gravel, some pebbles. Great. Go. Okay, I'm going to get ready to pour Are you? the water through. Okay. Oh, that is good. Okay, here we go. Okay, go on then. Very good. Oh, very wow. Good. You can already see that those rocks at the top are filtering out those big oh, bits. Oh, you can, can't you? Wow. So just gonna have the to... longer, oh, hello, the longer the water takes to drip through, the more effective it's going to be. It's I dripping. I pour a bit more in, actually. Okay, I just noticed I'm there. Look, I'm close no, to... Good. You've got a little bit more. Okay. A little bit more. There we go. Get some of the mucky bits in. Great. But the longer it takes and the slower it drips through, the clearer your water is going to be. So I'm actually going to put this to the side and we can come back to it later. Oh, I Good. see what you were thinking, Greg. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. oh, <don't. laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so we've considered water. Yep. Next up, we need to consider shelter. And yes. thankfully, we covered how to make mm -hmm. a shelter, a few different ways to make a shelter in yep. our Amazon Rainforest Survival School. Yes. So um, I think we've kind of got that one covered. But what mm. I want to know is who might we be sharing the island with? What? What's that? I don't. Can I you not hear that? Maybe maybe it's some kind of animal. They're sitting in the bushes. Uh, we should probably try to find out what it is. 
Okay, let's look. Okay. Um... No, hang on. hang on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. It could it. be after my puddings. I found it, 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 I found it. Careful. I don't think I can be go near it. Be careful. Wait. Whoop! Yep. It might bite. <laughs> long, long sound effect, this one. <gasps> it's Dave, everybody! It's Dave! Oh, Dave, what are you doing here? Oh, wow. It looks like Dave has been cast away here for a while, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. He's really, really adapted well to island life. But maybe he'll know a thing or two about how we could get rescued. Ask him. Shall I ask him now? Yeah, ask him. Oh, Dave. He says he's thinking about it. He'll think about it. All right, okay, he'll yeah. think about it. All right. Yeah, now, yeah. something we learned actually mm -hmm. in survival school was how yeah. to look for animal tracks. Yeah. Right? Because that is a really useful skill mm -hmm. to help us find and identify what the animal neighbours might be on this island. Yeah, Dave might not be the only one. Um, but looking for animal tracks is a really useful skill mm -hmm. if you want to follow and find an animal or if you simply want to work out other animals that might be living around you. Yeah, so normally though, <laughs> they will have given uh, given a few clues they will have mm -hmm. nibbled a leaf yeah for example right uh or they might have left you behind some little presents you know like that. some little <laughs> and from that you can identify what they might be is that you dave <laughs> animal droppings can be a really good way to help us understand the animals that might be around us in a, in a habitat or in an environment but another way we can identify animals and is to look at their footprints. Yeah, so we've got a few mm -hmm. footprints, a few tracks for you, and your challenge is to identify what these animals may be. Yeah, so these are tracks that have been left on the desert island. Wow, that water filter is quite noisy. <laughs> so what animal do you think made these tracks? Hmm. hmm. What do you think that is? On a sand? On a sand? Hmm. We can reveal. Yeah, it's an animal that you would find yeah. on a sandy bit of the desert island. Yeah. Uh, that animal is... A pig! Which is what really interesting fact. On an uninhabited island in the Bahamas called Big Major Key, it's a beach known as Pig Beach. And it's called that because it's home to a colony of feral pigs which live on the island and swim in the sea. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, pigs, they might mm -hmm. be here. Um, all right, what's this? What animal made these tracks? Hmm. Oh, I reckon you're going to get this one. Yeah, I think so. I think that was I pretty clear. I reckon you are writing in the live chat or yelling at the screen that that is a snake yeah yes there is and now interesting thing um you often think snakes make these s-shaped patterns yeah. these s-shaped uh, marks in the sand but actually they can make much straighter lines if they're a heavier snake mm. okay uh last one what do you think this is oh this is a, this great is a one. tougher one here we go because it looks like it's been made by some sort of vehicle but that was made by an animal tricky what is it these tracks were made by a horseshoe crab <gasps> horseshoe crabs are fascinating animals one they're not actually crabs at all they're cl more closely related to spiders yeah it looks like a crab but it's not it's a crab but it's more closely related to a spider awesome also, the oldest known species of, all ho of horseshoe crabs is 450 million years old, making them older than the dinosaurs. So we call them living fossils. Hit the fact bomb button. I can't, I can't get to it. I can't get to I'll it. There it Dave. is. There you go. Have a double fact bomb for that. Yeah, how Whoa. cool are horseshoe crabs? Very cool. So those are a few of the animals on the island that we are stranded with. But did you know that there might be... Oh, mm -hmm. you're putting them away. You're just for now. Bye, castaway Dave. He's just going for a wonder. <laughs> but did you know that there might be other animals living in your garden mm -hmm. or out on a path or a park? Or indeed, if you're on a desert island, they're with you as well. Mm. They might be small and quick. They might be uh, only coming out at night. Mm. How do you find out what they are? Mm. We've got an idea for you. We've got a great activity. Uh, it's, it's a footprint track trap. Yeah, it's not a trap to trap animals, no. it is a trap to trap an animal's footprint. Oh. And we have got one just here. Okay, Whee. this is brilliant. So to make your footprint trap, all you need is a shallow tray. We used a baking tray. We then filled it with sand and used a ruler to make sure that sand was level and smooth. We also sprayed it with a bit of water so that when we put our fingers in the sand, it left a mark. Then in the middle of the tray, we have a little dish. We just used an old lid, a recycled lid. And then in there, you want to put some food. That could be meaty cat or dog food, not fish, but meaty cat or dog food, mealworms. We actually use some little hedgehog uh, nibbly bits yeah some little biscuits <laughs> now we put this out for uh we put it out over an evening yes at night and when we went to look at it in the morning 
the food had all gone. Yeah. No, the food had gone, so clearly we'd had a visitor, but mm -hmm. there weren't any footprints. And the reason that there weren't any tracks in the sand is because it had been raining and the rain had washed it all away in the sand. So who ate all the biscuits? Good news is that we also put out our wildlife camera yes. so we could double check if there were any footprints to see what the animals were. And this is who ate the biscuits on night number one. <gasps> Look! It's a fox! Cheeky fox. Yeah! Looks like quite a young fox as well, which is really cool. We didn't know we had foxes in the garden. No, that's really neat. So that was great. So we reset it. Mm -hmm. We put some more food on top. We put it outside. This time we put it out for the day and the night. Mm -hmm. And we put it under a bit of a shelter. So if it did rain, it wouldn't uh, wreck those, mm -hmm. those footprints. And what did we find? Well, the results are here. You can see there isn't any food left on the tray. And we do have some footprints. And we can show you those with our desk camera. So this is the first set of footprints that we noticed. Uh, you can see that just there. It's quite large. Can you see that? If we just get that focus. One footprint there and another one here. They're very cute. They almost look like cartoon footprints actually. And then on the other side of the tray, over here, the sand is really disturbed. There are loads of little footprints. In fact, if we look at this one, if you just put my finger is, you can see it um, a little better. You can see the detail tiny little paw prints. So what animal do you think made those two different types of prints? We've got the larger paw print and the smaller one. What animal do you think it was? Because we can find out by looking at the footage on the wildlife camera. So why don't we first of all look at who made the large footprint? What do you think? Which animal do you think made it? Here it is. Yeah. It was a cat. That it came was. past at night. Yeah, that is our neighbour's cat who often comes to visit. But that cat was disappointed because actually all of the biscuits had already been eaten mm -hmm. by a very busy animal who visited over 20 times really? that morning. Yeah, it was very busy. Wow. What do you think it was? Well, I know because I've seen this little cute thing running around yeah. the garden. All right, here it is. It's it ratty. was a rat. I thought it might be a squirrel, actually, but no, it was a rat that came and ate every single one of the hedgehog biscuits. I know how it feels. <laughs> it was so sweet. I didn't know. No, I didn't expect that we were going to have that rat there. So have a go. You yeah. can build just some sand and a tray and a bit of food in the middle. You mm -hmm. can build your own animal footprint trap. Track trap. <laughs> a footprint trap. Track, track. Track. That's really difficult to say. Have a go. <laughs> you know what? I think our water filter is probably just about ready now. Oh, it's been dripping this. loudly in the background. All right, let's Whoa. have a look at this. Here no you go. way. Do you want to see the before and after? Yeah. Where is the, where is the Let me put water? that oh, oh, you put it over there. The way. Hang on. Here you go. Just so, just so you can see the difference, just how well that water filter wow. has worked. Wow. Look at that. What? That is incredible, isn't That's it? That's really good. That's worked so now, well. Now, we do have to repeat, this has not made that yeah, water clean enough it. for you to drink, all no. right? That's not drinkable water, but it's really good at filtering it out. In order to be drinkable, you'd have to boil it, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd have to boil it for quite a long time so you could drink it. Yeah, but just like the footprint trap, why not have a go at making this at home? Try different materials, see what works best. You could even have a competition to see who can get their water to run the clearest. Gosh, that is, that's worked really that's well. That's worked really well. I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this down. If you do make yourself a footprint track trap or indeed a water filter, um, share what you've done with us on the social medias. Here they are. This is us on Twitter and Instagram. Just tag us in your picture. Share yeah. them uh, at Greg for at Maddie Mo. So Greg, I don't know about you, but I think we probably need to start coming up with a plan to get us off this desert island, don't you? Desert island. Hang on. He's done it again. Da, 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 da. It's not, it's not a desert island, it's... What is that? Greg, you got an entire Vionetta. It's melted a bit no. in, the, in the heat of the air. Huh? Are you having a lovely time? Lovely, lovely time. <laughs> don't talk your mouthful. What? I mean, you could even, you could offer me a spoon or something. Or some? No, I don't want any of that. What I want is for us to make a raft sure. to help us get off the desert island. That's Who said desert need. island? No, I didn't. Who said dessert? No, I didn't. Who said dessert? <laughs> Here you go, you said dessert. <laughs> Come on. Have I some mean, Vianetta. I can't. When you put these glasses on, you can't help dance. Told you. I don't know she said on. dessert island, everyone. We're on a dessert no. island. No? No, no, no. We need to make a raft. We have to think about getting off. I nearly lost the Vianetta. Yep, that was part of the fun. 
<laughs> Someone said, do you have a, um, a cool box? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> we, we absolutely do. Okay. Right. So we went outside. Uh, for a little challenge, we had a go at building a raft using only natural materials. Here we go. Senses restored, okay? No glue, no scissors, no string. All we could use were things you could either find in the garden or a park, somewhere like that. Uh, and also, if you really were stranded on a desert island. You said desert <laughs> island! Here's what happened when you we made a desert twig island. raft. Hey, so we are going to build a twig raft. The only rules are we can only use natural materials. So no sticky tape, glue, string. We can just use things we'll find in the garden or you might find down at your local park. Important, and... it needs to float. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going in. I'm looking for a, a, a good twig. Hmm, bit thin. So this will make the base of the raft? Yeah. That's a winner. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, oh, jackpot. How straight that is. <laughs> Great. Uh, extract myself from the bush. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm looking for an alternative to string. Right. And we've got quite a lot of ivy that's trailing all over the different bushes, so I figured we could use that. Can you see this? Look at that. Isn't that incredible? It's already like stretchy string anyway. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> where it is, where it starts. This stuff is amazing. What we want to do is pick our straightest sticks and then snap them so we've got about six that are roughly the same length. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Perfect. We actually reckon six could make it a little bit narrow. Yeah, we're gonna add a few So more. we're going more like eight. eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight? I think eight like eight? Worse. Yeah, I think so. We're going eight. Shall we take these off and just keep that main stem? Yeah, good idea. Yeah? So how are you going to tie them together? I think you want to kind of wrap it round one before you go on to the next one, and then wrap it around the next one, and then wrap it around the next one, and that should pull them quite tight together. Give it a go. Oh, boom! That is just like string. Nice one, nature. Wrap it round that like that. Yeah, Ooh, that's, kinda, that's working really well. It's kind of working, isn't it? Yeah. Fun. That'll do. The second half of what I did, really good. That's nice and strong. First knot and first bit. Oh dear. So I'm gonna just uh, fix this up a bit with a bit of these little little Tendrils. ones. Because these little bits are like springs, they're almost just self-tying. You don't need to knot them. Over. And uh, there we go, keep that nice and tight. Yeah, the first ones are the hardest ones, I think. Yeah, cool, right. Okay, so you're going all the way around and then across. <laughs> I think I did something. Uh, oh! <laughs> Bother. I love doing things like this. <laughs> this new expert technique here. We thought that the vine itself was a bit thick, so I'm just splitting it to try and make it a bit thinner. Look at that. Oh yeah, nice. Natural fibres. Because this needs just a bit more repair work. I mean, it doesn't look pretty, but it's doing the job. As long as it floats. Does he think it needs a mast and maybe a sail? Should well, we that... just get one extra stick with a big leaf? <laughs> Fun idea. Right, quite a lot of lashing later, and we have a sail. Yay! <laughs> oh, the sea's quite heavy. <laughs> Moment of truth. Also got Maddie and Greg. Oh, that's so cute. Maddie and Greg are getting ready for their first voyage in the twig raft. Will it sink or will it float? Oh gosh, you ready? Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. Yay! Yay! Why don't we try one more passenger? We've got Princess Otter here. Let's see if the raft can take another one. Otter's as big as the raft. Yeah! <laughs> I've also got a hedgehog. No! <laughs> oh, I don't know, Greg. <gasps> no! no, no, no. <laughs> All right, Princess Otter, let's just leave Manny and Greg to it now. They need to escape. Back, Back to, to you in the, the studio. studio. We're off. Sorry, we were muted. Oh, so it worked! Yeah, you're <laughs> floated! And if you do have a go at making that, make sure you ask permission uh, before you just go and pick any old sort of like plants and flowers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But do have a go at making one at home. It's tricky, but really good it's fun. It's really funny. You've got to be patient, but I, I loved that. Yeah. Um, you know what it's time for? We should do a selfie. It's time for a selfie. Our Show number 50 selfie. 50th selfie. I've got the uh, water filter here. What are you going to use? I've got the raft. We've got Castaway Dave down here in the corner. I've got the raft. Here we go. Okay, all right. Get yourselves ready. This is a big one. Can we oh, see, can we see the before and after? Castaway Dave is. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah that's good. That's good. Okay. That's good. All right. You ready, you lot? One, two, three. 
It's the awkward selfie. this old fifty. Yeah. Brilliant. Aww. Amazing. Share them with us, please. We love seeing them. Oh. Be so oh. careful not to not to spill that. What's All that? Right. Hang on. Boom. Hang on. He's trying to tell me something. He's trying to tell me something. Wait a second. Yeah. What? What? <gasps> Good news. Castaway Dave has just told me that apparently there is another island close by which often has visitors to it. So if we can build a raft and get to that island, then we could be rescued. We're going to need that axe. Yes. That was a yeah. good idea, getting that axe onto that island so we can yeah. make a bigger version of yeah. that raft. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was quite enjoying the snacks on Dessert Island. I'm, I know you were. I know you were. But... We need to make it back in time to for this, to the spare room studio because mm. we have our special Let's Go Live awards ceremony on Wednesday. We can't miss that. That's going to be great. Before we push off into the waves, we would like to see your final batch of extreme explorer explorer <laughs> polar photos. Let's have a look at some of these. Here we go. Patty, William, and Ralph made a giant igloo out of cushions, and they could fit all three of them inside. Uh, this is Alea, who made this amazing narwhal tusk just in time for the awkward selfie. <laughs> wow, quick. that was quick. Jessica and Blair had lots of fun making their Antarctica scene, complete with igloo made out of cardboard and cotton wool. They even included a narwhal and some pink penguin poo. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Harry, this is Himalar Himalayan Harry, who's already um, with his coat and snow goggles to explore some icy places. Elizabeth made a marshmallow igloo uh, with a Lego Maddie and Greg enjoying a hot chocolate outside in the snow. <laughs> Holly made this igloo using giant marshmallows. Lily and Elsie made this diorama, which is beautiful, wow. of the Antarctic, with everything they learned in the show and also did their own research. I love that. It's fantastic. Well, should we play one video? <laughs> yeah. Okay, why let's not? play one video. So uh, this is Catherine and Luke. And what they did was they uh, they made their own version of the narwhal tusk narwhal horn game um, <laughs> and what happens when you get a question right is it on my head <laughs> oh. the narwhal tooth narwhal we should tooth. say yeah <laughs> I've eaten, it's a fun game I've though too many desserts <laughs> Okay, so we've got some news about the future of Let's Go Live coming up. But first, we just want to do some quick thank yous for everyone who helped us with our Extreme Explorer shows. Um, uh, first of all, big thank you to the Let's Go Live team. Yep. So that's Ke Kaylee, Kaliani, Rob and Ed. Yep. And also thanks to Hugh James and Hannah Ayub for help helping us this week too. Yeah, thank you. And a huge, huge thanks to our patrons as well uh, who mm -hmm. support the show. Without you, we couldn't, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do it, basically. No. But as always, our biggest thank you goes to you. Without you, this show would not happen. Uh, and we are so proud of everything that you create and the fun you have after watching Let's Go Live. Uh, so what do we have planned for Let's Go Live moving forwards? So on Wednesday, we already told you, we are holding an awards ceremony. Yeah, lots of you have been voting for your favourite moments from these past 50 shows of Let's Go Live. Uh, and we are going to be crowning the winners of five Let's Go Live awards yes. on Wednesday. We're also going to be showing lots of your videos. Uh, there's going to be a special quiz and we're going to be attempting something rather ambitious <laughs> here in the Spare Room studio. Uh, so come join us. Tell your friends. It's going to be a party. Yeah. And after that, we're going to have a little break from Let's Go Live shows. But we are still going to be uploading our best ofs every Friday. Yeah. We really like them because it means we can chat with you, answer your questions in the live chat. But also we get to recap some of our favourite moments from past weeks. This um, Friday is uh, Space Week. It is. It is yeah, indeed. Best of Space Space Week. So uh, we will be there in the live chat. It's a premiere. So we love we love answering your questions. And mm -hmm. um, it's great fun looking back on past weeks and activities. If you didn't watch that week, then you get a bunch of new activities to try. Mm -hmm. Or if you did, you get to retry them over the weekend. But the exciting big news is that we are going to be back with live shows in July yes. for some special summer holiday Let's Go Lives. <laughs> um, it's still going to be the let's go live that you know and love there'll be awkward selfies there'll be quizzes i'm sure however we are going on location yep. we are moving beyond the spare room studio <gasps> we're getting out of the spare room studio now yeah. if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel this is why it's really useful to do it because if you subscribe and you click the little bell button you get a notification every time we put up a new video mm -hmm. right and every time we get live you get notified so it's yeah. worth clicking subscribe and clicking the bell 
But before we head off today and we start to get ready for Wednesday's awards show, let's say goodbye to a few of you who are in the live chat right now. Who do we have? All right. Uh, we've got Bronwyn in Dover. We have Harry in Chester. Uh, we've got Morgan in, Dan in Doncaster. Noah and Reuben in Edinburgh. Hamish in Yokel. Elliot and Imogen in Manningtree. Fatima in London. Uh, Issa in Hemel Hempstead. Uh, Serenity, Maddie and Ivy in Brecon. Amy in Swindon. Uh, Flo, Otto and Polly in Maidstone. We've got Zach and Dylan in Glasgow. Ryan in Bristol. And Leah and Luke in Western Supermare. And loads Bye. more coming in. Maya and loads more. Thank you so, so much. Um, and goodbye, of course, to everyone who's mm -hmm. been watching back as well. Oh my goodness, Maddie. That was the 50th show. That was the end of Whoa. our 50th show. So we will see oh. you on Wednesday to celebrate the Let's Go Live Awards. Yeah, uh, live here, Spare Room Studio, 11 o'clock in the morning. Tell your buddies, let's have a party. For now though, stay curious. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye.